The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Welcome to the first Leadership in Action Lunch and Learn webinar of the year. Today we're teaming up with our national philanthropy, Hobie, to discuss leadership in the social change model. Participating today will get you eight Leadership in Action points, so thank you for being here. If you have any questions during this webinar, you can ask them in the questions box. There will be a couple of polls in this webinar. During that time, you can pick one of the answers by clicking it on your screen. Vicki Ference ray Senior Director of Programs for Hobi, is joining me today. A little background on Vicki. She oversees the program department staff at Penn, who supervises 58 U.S. affiliates and 70 program sites across all 50 states, plus international programs and a network of over 4,000 volunteers serving approximately 10,000 students. Vicki was a Hobie volunteer for 15 years before becoming a staff member at Hobie International in late 2004. Thank you, Vicki, for joining us today. It is my pleasure to be here. All right, so the first thing uh, we're going to do is a couple of poll questions, which I think Danielle is going to get set up for us here. Um, and so the first question, just to gauge, is are you familiar with the social change model of lead leadership? And if yes, how did you learn about it? And you can just put your answer into the uh, chat box. And if no, why did you decide to attend this webinar? And we're going to give everybody about 30 seconds or so to answer that. You should be able to click on the quick poll and then um, elaborate a little bit in the chat box. So you can go ahead and do that. And Danielle, you can let us know if it's coming coming in on the technology. Yes, we have 75%. <laughs> OK. Okay, so take another 10 seconds or so to finish up. And then Danielle, if you can give us the results. It was 73% said no and 27% said yes. Okay, great. And um, to the people who said yes, do you have answers to how they learned about it? And the people who said no, why they decided to attend the webinar, could you summarize? It looks like the ones that said yes um, is because they are a Hobie volunteer. Oh, yay. <laughs> Somebody That's learned great. about it in a leadership class in college. Also great. And then somebody was interested in learning because it's something brand new to them. And that's all the answers I got. Okay. All right. Great. Well, um, hopefully then uh, this will be informative for everybody today, even if you have uh, heard of the social change model of leadership before and have some experience with it. So I thought I would start with where this even came from and a little background on the social change model. So it was actually developed in the 1990s um, by a team at the University of California, Los Angeles' Higher Education Research Institute. And it was funded by the Federal Eisenhower Leadership Development Program. So it took them three years to develop. Um, it was specifically developed for undergraduate college students and focuses on knowledge, values, and skills that students need to develop in order to be able to lead effectively. The ultimate goal is to produce positive social change. And sometimes you'll see an acronym used for it, which is SCM. So, 
um, people who know the model well will sometimes talk about it as the SCM. The next um, slide here, maybe I'll move this along, thanks, um, is what the team came up with when they developed the social change model. So there's a whole big full blown report. Um, but this little diagram really summarizes it well, and this is what we're going to talk about today, is what this diagram means, um, what all these words on it mean, um, and how everything relates together. So we're going to come back to this diagram again, but for right now what I'd like you to do is notice the three circles representing what are called value categories. And those value categories are individual values, group values, and society or community values. And I want you to notice the arrows and that each of these values categories is inextricably linked to the others. Okay? Um, so, Daniel, you can go on. So the assumptions about the social change model. These are the background assumptions of which the model is actually built upon. And I think it is important to understand because it represents kind of a shift in thinking about leadership that was happening when this team uh, was developing the model. So uh, the first assumption is that leadership is collaborative and that effective leadership is based on collective action, shared power, and a passionate commitment to social justice. Um, leadership is a process and a group experience. Um, that works collaboratively toward a goal. So it's not just an act of an individual with authority. Leadership is based on values, and to have the trust necessary for collective action, students and groups must be clear about their values and consistent with their actions. All students can do leadership. Leadership development is not reserved for students holding leadership positions, but for any student wanting to engage with, engage with others to act to create change. And leadership is ultimately about change. Effective leadership involves being able to accomplish positive change for others and for the community. So back to the value categories of the social change model. So given those assumptions, and we've got these categories of individual, group, and society. And so the team who was developing the model was asking themselves these questions. Um, so for individual, what personal qualities support effective collective action and social change, and what individual qualities should students develop. For the group, what do students need to learn to work effectively in groups, and how can, can collaboration foster individual development and social change? And for community or society, how can involvement in positive change in the community promote group collaboration and develop individual character? So you can see, even in these questions that they were asking, that the individual, group, and society are all interrelated in the model. So back to the model and the diagram. And so the answers to the questions that uh, we just posed are actually the seven C's. And these are the terms within each value category circle. So you see within each circle there are some terms all beginning with a C, thus it's called the seven C's. And that's what we're going to talk about next. So the seven C's are consciousness of self, congruence, commitment, collaboration, common purpose, controversy with civility, and citizenship. And when you put all of those together, they result in what some people refer to as the eighth C, which is change. And that's the ultimate goal of the model. And so, Danielle, if you click back one, back to the model diagram, we'll see that in each of the circles um, is the C that relates to that value category, but you'll also see in the very middle of the diagram is change, and that's what ultimately happens when everything is working together. Go ahead and click forward, and next slide. So the individual values, what do these terms mean? And what do they mean in terms of the model? Um, so consciousness of self means being self-aware of the beliefs, values, attitudes, and emotions that motivate you to take action, being mindful or aware of your current emotional state, behavior, and perceptual lens. 
So what's a perceptual lens? I thought that term was interesting. It's basically how you see the world. Um, and uh, there's lots of talk these days about being mindful and just being really self-aware of how you are fitting uh, into the bigger world. Congruence is acting in ways that are consistent with your values and beliefs, thinking, feeling, and behaving with consistency, genuineness, authenticity, and honesty towards others. So it's basically matching your thinking and your feeling with your actions and being um, consistent and congruent with that. Commitment is basically the term that we're used to just having significant investment in an idea or person, both in terms of intensity and duration. Having the energy to serve the group and its goals. Commitment originates from within, but others can create an environment that supports an individual's passions. But the thing that's uh, really important to understand about commitment is the word duration. Um, so commitment has duration. It's not a short-term thing. Group values. Um, collaboration, working with others in a common effort, sharing responsibility, authority, and accountability. Um, multiplying group effectiveness by capitalizing on various perspectives and talents and on the power of diversity to generate creative solutions and actions. So it's bringing everybody into the process. Common purpose is having shared aims and values, involving others in building a group's vision and purpose. So it's not just necessarily about the leader's vision, but making sure that that vision is shared by the group and everyone is in alignment and understands the purpose. This next one is actually my favorite one, controversy with civility. And it's recognizing two fundamental realities of any creative effort or group effort. That differences in viewpoint are inevitable and that such differences must be aired openly but with civility. And the reason that that's my favorite is because I feel like in today's society, we could all do a better job on controversy with civility um, and really being able to discuss with people openly and politely and civilly um, issues to come to common understanding and hopefully resolution. So societal values only has one C, and that's citizenship which is believing in a process whereby an individual and or a group become responsibly connected to the community and to society through some activity, recognizing that members of communities are not independent, but interdependent, recognizing that individuals and groups have responsibility for the welfare of others. And that's what it means to be a citizen, which is to take part um, in the whole of society. And all of that put together um, can result in positive social change, where change is defined that uh, believing in the importance of making a better world and a better society for oneself and others, believing that individuals, groups, and communities have the ability to work together to make that change. But there's a key assumption about the social change model and that's that the ultimate goal of leadership is positive social change. And as I mentioned before, change is at the center of the diagram because it's considered to be at the hub of the social change model. So we've got um, another few poll questions coming up next. So we've talked about the social change model and the ultimate uh, goal is positive social change. but do you believe that, or do you think that there could be negative social change? So just take one moment and select yes or no. Um, another way to think of the question is, can leadership result in negative change instead of positive change? So go ahead and put your answers in now, and Danielle will give us the results. Yes, correct. There can be negative social change. There can also be um, negative uh, results of leadership. 
um, that can result from unethical leaders or leadership leaders who make poor choices or uh, bad decisions. Um, and so that really is uh, important to remember and note. And um, yes, I'm glad everybody is so aware of that. That's great. Now we'll pull up the next one. Okay, so can leadership result in negative change? Let's go ahead and put your answer in. I think we already kind of answered it. Okay, so yes, leadership can result in negative change, um, and that can be intentional or unintentional, um, so depending on the leader. So in the example of, you know, the one that everybody normally uses is Hitler, um, so he was definitely a leader, but his leadership resulted in negative change. Um, you can also have leadership result in negative change kind of unintentionally, um, or as a byproduct of a decision, um, kind of unintended consequences, or sometimes um, a decision just doesn't get the desired result, and that can result in negative change. So that's something to be aware of as well. Okay. Um, so to learn more, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, where you can get more references and learn more about the social change model, because what we did today was just a very uh, preliminary introduction. Um, so this is actually a book, uh, Leadership for a Better World, Understanding the Social Change Model of Leadership Development. Um, I recommend that if you are um, interested in learning more that you go ahead and read this. It is written at the undergraduate level and was designed um, specifically to be used in undergraduate college courses. So you can get this book on Amazon or could, might be even in your college bookstore. Um, and I'd also recommend that uh, check out the uh, leadership courses at your college or university. You might actually find an undergraduate level leadership course that's using this book. And um, I would definitely recommend you take that course if you find that. Um, Interestingly, this book is going to go to second edition in 2017, and Hobie's been asked to submit some content for it, um, so I'm very excited about that. So we'll see what the second edition looks like, but I have read the first edition myself, and it's very good. Um, in terms of references where you can go for more information, the first um, item here is the actual full-blown uh, report that was produced by the Higher Education Research Institute at UCLA. Um, and you can look that up online if you uh, want to read that. The second one is the book that we just uh, talked about, so you can look that up. And the last one here is a, a brief overview article about the social change model of leadership, and that's essentially what we did today in this presentation, which was just a uh, you know, brief introduction to what it all means. So what I'd like to do now is open it up to some uh, Q&A. Um, so I believe you can type questions into your chat box. And um, Danielle, I cannot see them coming in, but hopefully you'll be able to tell me what questions come in, and then hopefully I can answer or at least direct them to where they can find an answer. Yes, that would be great. So go ahead and take a few moments and put in some questions. Okay, we did just get one. The question is, how does Hobie use this model in its youth programs? Uh, excellent question. So um, this, the social change model actually is kind of a foundational model that we use when developing the curriculum for all of our different program offerings. Um, sometimes, depending on the program, it's more explicit, and other times it's um, not as explicit, more foundational in what we're doing. Um, but it is our underlying, one of the underlying models that we use. And um, Danielle's going to be talking in a moment that this is the first in a three-part webinar series talking about the social change model. 
The next webinar, we're going to talk about the service learning model. And then the third webinar, we're going to talk about how Hobie takes the social change model and the service learning model and overlays them to create um, what we use for our Hobie curriculum. That was a great question, by the way. Um, another one came in. Do you have any tips to avoid leadership resulting in unintentional negative change? Ah, yeah. Leadership resulting in unintentional negative change. So the best um, thing to do is really when you're uh, making your decisions, um, you know, you can kind of go with the philosophy two heads are better than one. So, you know, get some more people involved. Um, try and understand all of the different things that could happen as a result of the decision. Um, and hopefully you'll be able to kind of predict what the outcomes will be. But honestly, sometimes you just get an un unintended consequence that you just didn't see coming. Um, and the best you can do is when that happens, then try to address it. Um, so yeah, it is a challenge for sure of leadership, um, but you know, we're all human and we tr all try to do the best that we can. So um, I like to get, if it's, especially if it's a major decision, I like to get more people involved um, so that you can get different viewpoints because maybe somebody else will see something that you don't see about a decision. Great. Another one is, do you have any recommendations of how to begin implementing the SCM into our chapters? Oh, yeah. Well, so um, as I mentioned, whole courses are taught on the social change model. Um, and today we just did a very brief introduction. Um, I would recommend trying to find something at your college or university um, that's more of a full-blown course on the SCM. Um, but I think I'm not incorrect in saying, Danielle, that they could use this presentation at their chapter meetings. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and then maybe you can tell them where it will be posted. Um, but you could definitely, and this, this presentation has um, notes in it in the PowerPoint version, so um, you could use it at the chapter meetings. Um, I think, you know, honestly, one of the great things about it is just understanding it and understanding the eight C's and keeping them in mind um, when you're conducting your, your chapter meetings. Um, I think it, it will honestly go a long way to helping. Um, you know, just, um, you know, is everybody at your chapter committed? Is everybody um, acting with congruence? Um, are they being consciousness of self? Are people collaborative? Um, is there a common purpose? Are people working in the same direction with the same vision on the purpose of what they're doing? And do you practice controversy with civility? Can you have a disagreement? agreement and have an open and honest and productive discussion about it. And then, of course, um, you know, with Phi Sigma Pi, citizenship is part of what Phi Sigma Pi is about. Um, and are you demonstrating that in what you're doing as a chapter? Um, and if you are, then, and with your philanthropy and your projects, hopefully you're bringing about positive social change um, as a result of that model. So um, no reason why you can't share this uh, with your chapters and uh, be mindful about it. Yes, and we can upload this PowerPoint to our resource center online, which is bisonpi.org backslash resources. And we can also share it on our social media sites. So you can keep an eye out on that. That seems to be the last question that has come in. If we want to take a couple more seconds to see if any more are going to come. That's about it. Okay, we'll give last call for questions before Danielle goes to wrap up. Okay, well, thank you, thank you for discussing the social change model of leadership with, with us today. This is just the first Leadership in Action Lunch and Learn webinar in a series of three that Vicki will be joining us for. The next one will take place on March 2nd at noon Eastern where we will discuss the service learning model. And then on April 6th at noon Eastern, we will put together the two models. You won't want to miss them. Also, thank you for participating today. 
and congratulations on earning eight Leadership in Action points. Remember, your goal is to reach 75 points to earn your Leadership in Action certification. You can earn points by participating in local, regional, and national modules or monthly tweet meets and lunch and learn webinars. This month's tweet meet will be taking place on February 15th at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. The topic is regional conferences, and you can RSVP at phisumapi.org backslash tweet meet. That does it for today's Leadership in Action Lunch and Learn webinar. Lead on.